the Brothers Karamazov, Book 10, in Chapter 4. Now, finally, uh, Kolya is at uh, Ilyusha's house, ready to see him, and he's now going to meet uh, Alyosha Karamazov uh, for the first time, or at least speak to him for the very first time. And so uh, he has some preconceived notions about what Alyosha will be like, he assumes because he's a, a religious or a former religious figure, no doubt, and because he's Dmitry Karamazov's brother, that he, uh, Alyosha, is going to be ugly and cold and uh, a wretched uh, creature. And, of course, uh, he is disarmed completely when Alyosha humanizes Kolya and doesn't talk down to him, doesn't treat him like a child, but rather addresses him uh, as a person. He humanizes and dignifies Kolya, and that is, of course, everything Kolya wants. He wants uh, especially a, a male father figure, a teacher figure, to treat him uh, with respect and with humanity. And so let me digress here a second and say that this picks up a major uh, uh, motif in the brothers Karamazov. It's you have all three uh, brothers having a, a relationship to children and all three brothers' relationship to children says a lot about uh, that brother's character and that brother's worldview. So first we met uh, this uh, with Ivan in uh, book five in chapter four when he uh, is uh, calling God on the carpet and uh, bringing an attack against all sort of uh, theistic belief because of the uh, suffering of innocent children. And so Ivan cannot believe in a God who would let uh, uh, innocent children suffer. But uh, at the same time, uh, way back in uh, book uh, two and later on, uh, it's, uh, it's repeated. Uh, Ivan says that uh, while he can, in theory, uh, love humanity uh, as a, theolo as a uh, philosophical concept, he can't uh, actually love uh, real people. He finds it impossible to love real people. And so uh, what we see from Ivan's character as it relates to children is that uh, as a philosophical construct, he could love a uh, child, he could reject God uh, for not loving a child as Ivan feels that God should love uh, children. But when it comes down to it, uh, when it comes down to practically speaking, uh, Ivan uh, seems completely worthless in actually entering into the life of a suffering child. Rather, he uses the life of a suffering child to, uh, to criminalize uh, God's uh, behavior toward them. Dimitri uh, just recently has had a religious conversion uh, of sorts, and at the end of that religious conversion, he has fallen into a deep sleep, and he's had a dream uh, about a uh, mother with dry breast unable to, uh, to provide uh, nurture to her child, and so the baby is crying out, and Dimitri is now outside of his own uh, world of concerns, and now he's able to hear the cries of a baby, and so he uh, uh, cries out in his dream, uh, what's wrong with the baby, who will help the baby uh, kind of idea. And so we've seen uh, Ivan and Dimitri uh, sort of two different characters. In his dreams, uh, Dimitri is concerned about children. In his philosophy, Ivan is concerned about children. Uh, but you know what? Uh, what or who, what worldview or who is actually in the life of a real life suffering children, child? Well, it's certainly not Ivan and it's not uh, Dimitri, and it's also not Kolya, who is a uh, mini Ivan. Uh, in his way, he is a, a little socialist and a little uh, atheist. He's a little Ivan. Uh, he is uh, influenced by Rakitin's uh, teaching, and uh, he is also useless when it comes to a suffering child. Who is there? What adult is there to help an actual uh, suffering child? Well, it's Alyosha. So he may not have the airtight uh, philosophical and theological arguments that Ivan has, but Dostoevsky's thesis is, well, uh, that's reason, but reason uh, doesn't uh, propel anyone to love. In fact, it, uh, it provides a, uh, 
it provides a, a reason not to enter into uh, love. But uh, faith does propel people to love. Uh, people who uh, see themselves uh, as spiritual Ilyushas, adopted and loved by a, a father, uh, will that will transform uh, their minds and their hearts. And uh, being recipients of love, they will uh, uh, extend that love to other people. And so this active love that uh, Alyosha has learned uh, via Zosima, that Zosima has learned via his brother, that's being passed down to the uh, generations, and Alyosha is entering into a loving uh, relationship with these boys. And so Kulia uh, seems like he sees that for the first time, or maybe more accurately feels uh, respect and hum humanity from someone other than his mom for the first time. And so Kulia is completely disarmed by Alyosha, leading him to speak of his relationship, his past relationship with Ilyusha. And so evidently, uh, uh, Kolya has uh, been a respecter of Ilyusha, or an admirer of Ilyusha, because as he uh, is bullied, he always uh, stood up for himself, he always fought back, and that made Kolya want to be his helper, his protector, and so he took on that role. Uh, but that... Uh, made Ilyusha both uh, simultaneously uh, both appreciative of Kolya, but also resentful. Appreciative because it's nice to have help, but resentful because it also implies that Ilyusha is weak and uh, needed help, and so this has caused a, uh, a strain in their uh, relationship thus far, and so we get a little bit of a backstory that Alyosha has been there for Ily Ilyusha. Alyosha has been teaching these 10 other boys to be there for Ilyusha. Kolya, uh, in theory, just like Ivan, would love to uh, would love to be there for someone like Ilyusha, but in practice actually has not. So though in his mind, he respect and, and admires uh, aspects of Ilyusha's character, in practice, uh, he hasn't been of much worth. There's no, there's no street value uh, to his uh, philosophy, um, but... Uh, but uh, uh, Alyosha will uh, will be an influence on his life, hopefully, because uh, there's always teachers of the next generation, and thus far, uh, Rakitin has been uh, has been uh, uh, Kolya's teacher. Speaking of bad teachers of the next generation, uh, what is also uh, revealed in this chapter is uh, it's not only Rakitin who has been teaching the kids, also that. Uh, that jerk Smirdyakov has been teaching the kids too. And so he taught uh, Smirdyakov, taught Ilyusha this old trick where you uh, put a, uh, a needle or a pin, uh, a nail inside a uh, dog treat, and then uh, you give the dog the treat, and then ha ha ha, uh, the dog has swallowed the nail, and isn't it funny to torture an animal? Of course, going against uh, Zosima's brother's uh, uh, revelation and Zosima's revelation and Alyosha's revelation that uh, that we are all one and that the earth is beautiful and that we should embrace all of nature and all of the uh, animal kingdom. Uh, of course, Smirnyakov is the opposite, opposing uh, worldview where there is no God, there is no moral culpability, and if there's no God, if there's no judge, if there's no uh, divine lawgiver, then all morality is just uh, human opinion, and thus everything is permitted, in court, uh, uh, including uh, uh, playing pranks, playing tricks on dogs. Well, Ilyusha did that, and uh, his dog uh, probably died. His dog probably uh, ran away, and Ilyusha now interprets his health as uh, God's wrath. Uh, God is punishing him for hurting and probably uh, killing this dog. Well, Ilyusha can't help but notice that Kulia is with a dog that somewhat matches the description of the dead-slash-lost dog of Ilyusha, and Kulia says, no, 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 not it. It's not the it's not the same dog. So in this chapter, we get the introduction of uh, Kolya to uh, Alyosha Karamazov, and in this introduction, the backstory of the relationship between Ilyusha and Kolya and their uh, influencers. Uh, on Kolya's side, it's Rakitin's philosophy. On, on Ilyusha's side, it's the lack of morality of old Smirdyakov. So we'll see if Alyosha's Christian goodness and active love 
can be a greater influence than uh, Rakitin's philosophizing and uh, Smirnyakov's uh, bullying of uh, pets.